uh, hello everyone, welcome to Bangers, Bombs, and Banter. This is episode 36. Six. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> um, I'm one of your hosts, Joe. I'm here with my co-host, Brendan. Hi, I'm the co-host, Brendan. And we don't have a guest this week, so... No, it's just the two of us. Yo, it's like that Eminem song. Yo, it's like that Will Smith song. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Uh, please watch our Big Willie Style episode. It's a great episode. We talk about Big Willie Style. Big Willie Style underrated record. Uh, yeah. Kind of. Honestly, kind of. There's some kind bangers of. on there. There really is. I I do love j- getting jiggy with it. Yeah. Um. It's right. nowhere near as good as Wild uh, Wild we West, got... though. We can all agree that's the best Will Smith song ever. What is? Wild Wild West. The um okay i don't know promotional about song you're, you're not gonna do getting jiggy with it like that come on okay okay getting jiggy with it is clearly the best um, all right anyway. all right uh we got a cool show coming up first we got some music and movie news so i can't see it <laughs> um <laughs> uh ooh. um then afterwards, we're going to be discussing the album. I forgot the album name. Uh, Chaos Is Me Chaos by is Orchid. Uh, pretty influential screamo slash hardcore record. Uh, and then we're going to talk about uh, the film Wild Strawberries, directed by Igmar Bergman. Mm-hmm. So yeah, let's, uh, let's just jump right into the news. All right. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, um, I, f- I remembered our first the first news story is. <laughs> Brendan, uh, Brendan sent me a screenshot <laughs> or something, and it made me laugh. Um, but our first news story is pretty depressing. But uh, Sophie uh, has passed away at thirty four pretty yes. uh influential and very beloved producer her album uh her album oil of every pearl's on insides is pretty incredible mm-hmm. please go listen to it it's a fantastic record um it's just like it fucking sucks it really does it's such a shock to it was an accident uh yeah. she she slipped and fell accidentally while trying to gaze at the moon, so I guess, which is, um, it just, like, it hit a lot of people very hard. Sophie's a very, she's very influential, and everybody that worked with her loved to work with her. I've only ever heard good, heard good things about Sophie. Um, yeah. Trans icon as well, and she was such a, like, such a great role model for so many people. Yeah. Um, and just sucks that you know that this has happened uh yeah definitely yeah really important it i know at least at least for me and i i kind of expect for you as well joe that we were we were really getting into music around 2018 and sophie was like yeah sophie's uh, sophie's album was huge that year and we both loved it so yeah definitely um, man, it's just, just depressing. I don't know. Sophie's death really hit me, uh, more so mm. than other artists. I don't, I don't know why. I think it was just it was so like sudden and unexpected. I find I don't know. Hmm. No, yeah, definitely. It just, it hit me a yeah. lot too. Yeah. Um. Well. With that, we'll get into uh, th- less depressing news, but the more Please. existential horror news. <laughs> oh boy! Um, but uh, Spotify recently uh, secured a patent uh, that involves monitor oh, yeah. monitoring users' speech to recommend music. Uh, 
The streaming platform is interested in extracting data points like emotional state, gender, age, and accent to hone its recommendations. Uh, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. I, it's a music. We don't need this, Spotify. Yeah, but like, let's say you're talking to your friends and Spotify is listening to you and they're like, oh, you're in a happy mood. Let's give you happy music. Let's Come on, that's you, a really yeah. useful feature that everybody will need. Let's play and it's some definitely happy. not just Spotify making an excuse to record your speech. Yeah. Yeah. He, well, then they can recommend you happy music like a crow looked at me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'll be a really fun, happy time. I guarantee you that will happen. Like, even if it, like, correctly identifies that you're happy, it'll, like, fuck up somehow. Considering Spotify's algorithms are so bad, like, literally half my Discover Weekly is just stuff I already listen to, so... Mm. Maybe. <laughs> um... Yeah, um... Let's... Spotify needs to, uh, stop. This is kind of terrifying. Yes. Spotify um, does not need to record your voice to give you better music recommendations. Yeah. Alright. Uh, next in... Well, now well, we're moving on to movie news, actually. There's not really much more music news. Um, <laughs> that would be more fun. Oh? This story... I did not send the story to anyone purposely because I wanted to wait for the podcast to share it. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so, apparently, uh, in Age of Ultron... <laughs> Sure. The Avengers film. Uh, Joss Whedon insisted on giving Vision a penis. <laughs> 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 oh, um, there's a quote from uh, Paul Bettany, uh, who plays Vision. He says, "I know, Joss Whedon really, really wanted the rendition of him when Vision is first born before he was was closed." Uh, he was like, he's gotta have a penis. <laughs> and everyone, I mean, was like, I don't know, Joss. I mean, I'm not sure. <laughs> he has to have a penis. I want to see some drawings of penises. <laughs> so they actually, somewhere in this rendition of Vision's birth, uh, drew him with pe- with these penises. And they put them all up on the wall, and Joss went, Yeah, I'm 100% wrong. I don't need to see any of these. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Okay, what the fuck? Like, I'm sure he was just, like, thinking of, like, Watchmen with Dr. Manhattan or something. And he was like, yes, just like that. It's like, no. (laughs) No. Oh, man. (laughs) That entire transcript is so good. Uh, But, um, well, uh, you're welcome for that, everyone. (laughs) That was so... I saw it on the fucking, like, on a circle jerk sub, and I was like, I have to. I have to include the story if it's real. So, yeah. Um, well, next in movie news, uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League it will be arriving on March 18th. Let's go. It's four hours long. Oh, God. <laughs> Tune in. The Sunday or whenever after mon- March 18th to to get our review of it. Oh, it's yeah. It's going to be great. The, the 21st, or, well, that'll be, it'll be uploaded a bit later, but whatever. Uh, yeah. Daddy Zach. Daddy Zaddy. He's going to be... Daddy Zaddy. <laughs> yeah. Gonna, he's going to give us a masterpiece. You know, it's a four-hour-long masterpiece. Let's go. Yeah. You know, it'll put Lawrence of Arabia to shame. If I hope so. Yeah. 
You know, I do too, actually. I like I really hope it's like actually really good. That I don't think be, it's going I, that would be really impressive if it was. Yeah. Um I don't um, think it's going to be at all, but it'd no. be cool. I think um, I'm going to not want to continue. I think I'm going to be upset by the one hour mark, and I think I'm not going to want to continue by the two hour mark. Yeah. And then there's still two more hours. I feel like we'll have to take a like I oh. It'll probably be a film that we have to watch in sittings, honestly. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, uh, lastly, in movie news, uh, Darren Aronofsky is directing a Blumhouse film called Adrift. Mm-hmm. Uh, like he's doing, like he's, I guess he's doing two films because he's also directing the one with Brendan Fraser, but this is a different film. Um, okay. And this stars Jared Leto. <laughs> Oh, so you okay. know it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> um, I mean, he's like the best Joker, so <laughs> it's probably gonna be pretty good. He's good in Blade Runner. He's good yeah. in Blade Runner. Um, yeah, but apparently uh, this film is gonna be adapted from a short story by uh, Koji Suzuki, who's right. a Japanese horror author. I don't know. Oh, cool. Uh, anything about him, but that'll, it will be definitely interesting. It's based off a Japanese horror story, so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. That's it for news. Let's go into the album that we listened to for this week. Chaos is Me by Orchid. Yeah. Uh, this was my pick for an album. We were kind of scrambling last minute as we do and we don't have a guest that like picks something for us because we didn't have a guest this week so i was like uh what's on my to listen list and this album was there so i was like yeah i didn't know any i like didn't even know what genre this was i think i knew that was like a hardcore variant but Mm. not i didn't really know much about it i'd seen like recommended around the internet so i was like yeah seems interesting uh I I think it's a, a pretty sweet project, um, personally. It is, I have to say, it's a cool, like, screamo, hardcore record. And it's yeah. those are my thoughts. It's cool. I don't have much to say on this. <laughs> like, at all. <laughs> it's, so, this is, like, a very short record. It's 19 minutes long, 11 tracks. Very, like, a lot of... Or some of the more hardcore stuff, like I'm thinking, uh, I don't know, uh, an albatross, for example, like pretty short stuff. It's the band Orchid formed in like Amherst, Massachusetts, uh, and was essentially they formed because they were like, "Hey, the Washington punk scene sucks. Let's make our own punk." And then they <laughs> did, and then they did this, uh, and it's produced by Kurt Bayou of Converge. So cool. that's isn't it Kurt Ballou? I'm, I, I don't know how to say his name. You're the Converge fan, so I'm counting on you. I'm pretty sure it's Kurt Ballou. Okay, I it's trust like your his last name's weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, I you know it's cool. It's it got cool. some pretty it's cool riffs. It's it's kind of chunk if it reminds me of a lot of like black metal uh it, that area. it reminds me of like death heaven at occasionally at points uh which has, is really cool i think it's mainly like the guitars sound very black metal-esque to me yeah um but in a much more like punky way um mm-hmm. I, I think also the vocals contribute to that uh this is like a screamo record essentially yeah, but I would definitely I, call it Screamo. But the vocals do have a lot of similarity to a lot of black metal vocals, I've heard. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, it, it's cool. Oh. It's fun. Mm-hmm. I, I, I personally, I feel like I'm more positive on this record, actually, than you are, maybe. Probably. I, I, I definitely really enjoy it. I think a lot of the riffs that they fall into uh i i feel like they're like a lot of fun and they sound pretty pretty like sick most of the time Mm. um 
there's uh, like I do like how kind of unclean a lot of this record is. I think it really fits well with the the whole chaos is me sound. Um, there's like a lot of tracks that I like really enjoy here. Um, I don't know, for the most part, like just a couple tracks out of the track list that I'm just not that big on, but yeah, I I like it a lot really. Like that's yeah, honestly probably one of my favorite like emo screamo albums interesting okay like i i like this record i just find it kind like all of it just kind of blends together for me i can um, yeah i definitely understand that um, i don't know i like i compare like some of my other like favorite like screamo stuff has like i find i can pretty easily pick out different tracks or is this kind of just like it's like a blob in my head <laughs> okay uh, just like one thing um and like it, it's definitely fun i think that you know they got some meaty riffs some cool mm -hmm. uh some really great production on this um mm -hmm. but like it doesn't it's not like it's, i'm not huge on it just because of how like i don't like i despite this being so influential i'm not I don't he I, it doesn't sound super distinct to me okay you know and i feel like for me personally like the biggest element of screamo that i love is kind of like the like raw emotion that goes into a lot of it um and that's not really here at least like uh at least like viscerally for me um, yeah like no, I, I totally some, yeah. oh sorry go well, ahead some of my favorite been uh screw acts like loma prieta for example have like for me very emotionally impactful like lyrics and instrumentation on them their stuff so mm -hmm. yeah i told you that like the i i will agree that like the emotional impact of this record really isn't there it's for me definitely more in the sound and the style yeah. um because like you can listen to it and look at the lyrics and they're not that like emotionally deep or anything there's they're not bad by any means but they're maybe a bit basic um but i don't know i just love i i i get where you i i totally get where you're coming from with it kind of blending together sonically i think for me that can that happens like with the first couple tracks in the record but then they start getting more like uh the the these songs start to have like intros with like you know specific riffs and stuff like that that start to help me pick out these songs more and mm. more as the record goes on and then the the ending track Eblog of a car crash as like i i just like really love that song and i think it sounds real real neat and also mm. pretty distinct from the rest mm. of the record as well um yeah definitely that song there's like individual songs that I can pick out when the instrumentation changes to being like much calmer and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's just hard for me to like remember any specific like part of it other than a general sound that it has. Uh -huh. you know? um, yeah. Like, I think yeah, it's yeah. cool. Uh, just not really the type of. I don't know, just not really. It just didn't pop out to me like some other right. emo stuff or screamo stuff does. Yeah. No, totally totally understandable. Um, yeah, I mean, that's... I, this record's, like, pretty short, so we don't have, like, a ton to say on it, Yeah. I guess. We can head into some scores if you wanted to. Don't sure. You have stuff, all the stuff you want to say. We've... Because we've gone over... Like, this... I... Even if, if like, Screamo and uh, hardcore punk variants are your thing, definitely check this record out. If they're not your thing, I don't think this is, like... I think this is a record you could definitely try and see how you feel about it. Um, because it's... it's I, I, I think it's solid, definitely. Mm. There's... If you, if you are looking for something more emotional, more 
personal, definitely, I, I think go go to other bands. Go to like um, Touche More or mm. you know Loma Prieta, yeah, um, or fucking Law Dispute. Uh, although yeah. not really screamo, it's, but it's like it's post hardcore. Yeah, but like, but the emotion is yeah. there. Yeah. Um. But I don't know. The, it's it's got a f- cool sound. I think. Um. Yeah. I guess I'm personally I'm at like an eight out of ten on this. An eight out of ten. Yep. Okay. Um. Yeah. Like I enjoy this record. I think. It just like the blending together of everything i think kind of holds it back and it's not it's not something that sticks out in my mind where i'm like oh i really want to go back to that because of like this riff or this riff um but it's like cool while it's on i think it's pretty fun uh i would definitely recommend checking it out i'd give it like a seven out of ten i think it's solid yeah yeah definitely uh solid solid project glad Honestly, happy that I just randomly picked it, um, and it, I ended up really enjoying it, mm-hmm. uh, even though it's, this is, like, not really my thing. Like, I, yeah, I, like, I, I was kind of surprised you liked it so much. I thought you were going to be like, it's okay. No, no, I definitely, I ended up really <coughs> enjoying it, so, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, we can move on to the movie. Yeah. Which we also kind of picked on a whim last week. So. Yeah. Um, so the movie we picked is Wild Strawberries, directed by Ingmar Bergman, who we previously talked about Persona on the show, which is uh, incredible. It's really good. <laughs> um, and this Wild Strawberries is a much earlier film of his. Uh, it was released in 1957, same year as The Seventh Seal, which is mm-hmm. probably his most famous film. Yeah. Uh, and uh yeah it's pretty interesting this definitely feels like a 1950s film mm-hmm. um compared to persona um <laughs> persona is like way ahead of its time so. yeah that's true <laughs> um it's definitely I don't know, where do we want to start? I mean, I guess spoilers for Wild Strawberries. Yeah, so kind of like the basic premise of the film is that you have this old doctor. um, He's like 76, uh, and he's kind of grown old and cold in his old age. Uh, He's he's become known as like kind of ruthless and occasionally belligerent. We see him at the start like fighting with his maid. and he's going on a road trip to accept an honorary degree from uh, a university in Lund or something. Yo, um, is this the best road trip film? I, I think well, I think so. It's weird. It depends on what you classify as a road trip film. It's, it's <laughs> like the road trip isn't really the point of the film. So it's hard. It's kind of hard to classify as a road trip film. There's a lot of dream sequences. Well, it's like are, I mean, is the, is the road trip ever the point of a road trip film uh well it's not the it's about the journey not the destination joe yeah that's the point of a road trip though is it's about the journey not the destination yeah and the road trip is the journey yeah but this film isn't i guess so it's about the character's journey but i get i i guess i suppose he evolves as the road evolves so yes it is technically a road trip film I mean, it depends on, like, again, it, w- it depends on what you classify as a road trip film. Like, his children That's have true. been a road trip film, because, like, it's a journey, uh, and they drive on roads a lot. That's true. I don't know. I really wouldn't classify that as a ch- as a road trip film, but... <laughs> um, what are movies with people driving? Um, here, well, I'm Saving just gonna Private Google. Ryan? I'm sh- people probably drive in that movie, road trip film. Um... People drive tanks. Come and see. Come and really, see. Let's really fun road trip film. <laughs> um, Green Book. Green Book. Green Book. Oh, <laughs> the least racist road trip film I've ever seen. Okay, here we go. Insider with the 27 best road trip movies to watch so you forget you're stuck at home. Okay, what's... Uh, Borat? 
That's a that's actually that, that a is a road trip, trip film. film. Um, Blues Brothers. Yeah, Blues Brothers is actually a really fun film. Would recommend. Um, I'm just picking out the good ones, so like I don't. There. Um, Sonic. Logan. Okay. I guess Logan kind of counts. The Muppet f- movie. That is a good road trip film. Very wholesome movie. Um, I don't know. Does Toy Story 4 count? It's sort of I haven't seen Toy Story 4. I guess it's not really a road trip film. Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> also, I've not seen it. Rain Man? I haven't seen that, but I guess maybe it's over a film. I don't know. I'm trusting Insider here. Oh, uh, Gozu, for anybody who's seen Gozu, is one really <laughs> weird Takashi Miike film. Mm. It's technically a, t- sort of a road trip. Not really. Sort of. It's a... They drive in cars from places to places. Road trip. Anyways... Back to Wild Strawberry. The Gotti? Go- Gotti? Gotti? They drive in cars in Gotti. He parks a bus on someone's ass <laughs> sideways. <laughs> we watched Gotti yesterday, and uh, Joe's very excited. Experience. All right. Uh, Gotti. We have to end. We have to end this episode with you'll never... You'll never meet another guy like me if you live to be 5,000. Yeah. Wow. Um, anyway, Wild Strawberries. Um, Wild Strawberries. So, yeah, it's a road trip film. Uh, yeah. Kind of. Sort it's, of. Well, uh, sort of. A lot of it is, yeah, you said, I think you mentioned There's a lot, a lot of, of dream sequences. sequences. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, it's it's really about this this doctor and... He's kind of reminiscing about his life and the lives of those around him. It's it the film explores a lot through through these means. Um, I think the theme that like kind of resonated me with me the most was like how it explores the value of life. Because mm. uh, you see you see all these different characters at different stages of their lives, mm. and they're all ready to die. Um, essentially and it's the especially the flat kind of yeah the flashback with um marianne telling isaac about like the conversation her and her husband had that was like a very very powerful scene Mm. um and i uh i don't know that was like it's very well written very well done uh that was like really made me like whoa Huh. You you hit the whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um I feel like I guess for me the, the like a main theme or idea that I found it exploring is like the idea of growing apart. Mhm. Um and like becoming like cold to each other and like, you know, uh how to deal with that essentially like what it's it's kind of like i don't there's a lot that it goes into but i think mm-hmm. a lot of it is like about um kind of what we need out of relationships and why we grow apart and stuff like that um, yeah you see m- like many different relationships between people um uh, not all of them are good uh in fact most of them kind of aren't there's a lot of kids with unwant who, with parents who didn't want them, and marriage is bad. Especially, we have a flashback between Isaac and his wife. Um, well, it's not a flashback, but Isaac is kind of viewing scenes from the past, um, and he's able to see what has happened. Uh, and this uh, that scene was also very odd, considering mm. you you like you literally don't know anything about his wife up until that point um Mm. and you see that and that's a very it it kind of it definitely tells you more about why isaac is the way he is and you can see that how his life has affected him because 
up until that point, you know that he was kind of scorned by Sarah. By the way, uh, this movie uh, a little a little incestuous, but <laughs> oh yeah, 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 um, kind of. It, it's wholesome, uh, sort of. <laughs> it's uh, I think the end. The ending is kind of wholesome. It's the like very, is very like. Wholesome. Is, is, the ending feels very at peace uh, mm-hmm. with itself. Yeah, essentially, the way it goes is that uh, so at the beginning, Isaac is he's kind of cold and ruthless, and over the course, he realizes that uh, he 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 realizes all the things that made him this way throughout his life. He grows to accept those things, uh, and is. And at, like at the end of the day, just like a better person because of it, he sees, mm. um, like, you can live your life this way, yes, or you can live your life differently. You can be nicer to people, and you will be happier, and other mm. people will be happier too. Um, and that I think the 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 scene that kind of exemplifies that the most is there's two scenes kind of like one right after the other. Where they're on the road and they meet this uh, this couple that almost crashes their car into them. Yeah. Uh, oh my god. And that couple is unhappy, to say the least. Mm. Uh, they just fight all the time and they are incompatible. I I guess they're, I would they're say they're very shitty to each other. Mm-hmm. I know. <laughs> there's at one point one of the guy is like. Oh, this is how we make fun of each other. That's how we. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's we like, do. And it's um, obviously like ni- neither one of them is really happy or feeling yeah. fulfilled, um, yeah. and they get kicked out of the car, which is great. Um, but then they, after that, like after seeing that, they drive to the gas station, and the guy is like, "Everybody here talks about you, Isaac. Everybody here remembers." your your generosity and stuff like that and it's like Mm. just kind of seeing the contrast of those two things right after each other was uh like really powerful like because you could you can you you have hopefully some self-agency in your life and if you choose to be a good person and not be shitty to the people around you people will be happier with you yeah um yeah, it was. Uh, it is a very wholesome movie. There's, like, some some really funny moments, especially with uh, Sarah and her two boyfriends. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the entire sequence where they're like fighting outside the car, and like they get broken up by um, uh, who's the character? Marianne. Yeah, Marianne. Um, and then they keep fighting. <laughs> it was really funny. Um, I actually really. I feel like those characters almost like it's weird that I feel like they're almost kind of represent kind of the central idea of the film in a way because despite the two guys constantly getting into this like r- really heated argument mm-hmm. like afterwards they're cool with each other yeah and they're like and they're all are, happily going off to Italy together yeah um, and also, I don't know who the others, but the, those two, cause it's Sarah and her two boyfriends mirrors Sarah and Oscar and Siegfried in the, the past. Mm. Not, yeah. I don't think it's like, it's direct, but definitely that parallel is there. Um, yeah, which is cool. I mean, there's Sarah the Sarah is played by the same actress, so. There's the monologue that Sarah has in the past. Yeah. Where she talks about how Isaac is, like, he's very, like, proper, I guess. He's very religious. Mm -hmm. um, And, like, um, he's very dedicated to that. Whereas uh, the other guy, who I forget the name of. uh, Siegfried. Siegfried. um, Swedish Ryan Gosling. (laughs) Yeah. Um, He's got that mustache. He's, like, uh, he's a lot more, like, adventurous and very what's the word for it he's very like a free, he's like a free spirit kind of, yeah ways. he's kind of yeah yeah um 
So it definitely mirrors the two guys in the present who one of them is going to become a minister and the other one's... Uh, he's an atheist, it seems. Yeah, he's and he doesn't believe in God. He's, he wants to become a scientist or a doctor. Yeah. Um, I can't... Were, were they supposed to be all kids? The, yeah, or I'm like pretty teenagers? sure they were supposed to be... Uh, it's like, kind of hard to tell. I thought they were in their twenties. <laughs> yeah, they the actors are definitely in their twenties. I think the characters are supposed to be like late teens. Okay, that makes sense. Because they talk. I mean, there's one point where, uh, Marianne, like when she tells the couple to get out of the car, it's like, please, for the sake of the kids. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah. Um. But that was cool. Definitely. Yeah. Fun, fun, fun there. Um, Did you... What do you think, like... This is the part that I'm still kind of shaky on. What do you, what do you think, like, the wild strawberries themselves symbolize? Because, like, I was, I've been trying to, like, figure it out. Hmm. Um, I think... Because I was, I was kind of thinking along the lines of, like, the wildness of them. Uh, but yeah, I don't see... Someone needs to tell these strawberries to calm the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> because because um, at the beginning, they're, like, picking wild strawberry. But that doesn't make sense, because... Okay. Because at the beginning, they're picking wild strawberries, and there's plenty of strawberries. And at the end, she's like, there's no more wild strawberries. Um... Maybe it just has to do with the passage of time. Maybe. Uh, I'm wondering if it's kind of... Um, there's, like... You know how there's kind of, like... The, like, in a relationship, there's, like, almost like a honeymoon phase, where it's, like, mm-hmm. you're really infatuated with the other person, and then, like, after a while, like, that can go away. Okay. I, I don't know. Maybe something along those lines, where... Because when... Uh, within that scene where she, uh, Sarah's like, there's no more wild strawberries, um, she then takes Isaac to see his parents, who are, like, just, you know, hanging out on the beach and look yeah. pretty happy and content. Um, so, like, maybe it has to do with, like, finding, uh, peace with that, in a way? Like, under, like, working through your relationship after... The honeymoon phase? Okay. Yeah. I don't know if that's necessarily accurate because I don't think a lot of the rest of the film has to do with that. Mm-hmm. But it has to do with relationships, but I don't think it's specifically that. Um, yes. There's, like... This, this film has, like, a very heavy focus on, like, relationships and especially marriage and yeah. spending your life with uh, another person. Yeah. Um, I don't know, though. Yeah. We haven't. We also haven't looked up like film analysis like we did for Persona because yeah. we literally just finished watching this movie. So, um, um, there's yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think mean, it's uh, that's that's only something that like I want to think about more. Uh, mm. This film it definitely has a lot going on, and there's probably a lot of things that I missed honestly. Um, yeah. I think there's also, like, like a f- almost fear of death in the film. I mean, everyone talks about death. Uh, but, like, you have, at the very beginning, the dream sequence, mm-hmm. where you have, like... Yeah, it, it, him and Probably the, the most coffee. surreal part of the film, mm-hmm. uh, where, like, there's the clock, and without... Clock without handle, hands. And, like, uh, the, you know, there's, like, a f- not a funeral procession, but it's, like... It's just it's just a hearse. A horse driven yeah. hearse drives along and a coffin falls out and he Isaac is in the coffin. Yeah. Um and that theme of like death is very present in mm-hmm. it's mirrored in um the clock without hand is mirrored when his mother shows him this st- it's not a stopwatch. The pocket watch. The pocket watch, yeah. yeah. Um I'm not it feels like it's about, like, this fear of death. Like, I, I think it's kind of like an existential dread to it, where it's... I think... Yeah, yeah, Because I... What I interpreted with the clock without hands is that... It's because he sees that, and then, like, often happens right out of it. So, 
I kind of interpret that as being like there's no time left for him. Mm, um, that, yeah, that makes sense. But yeah. the or minute, I think I think hmm. it's not necessarily that he, there's no time left, but he feels like there's yeah. he's like his life's over essentially. Because mm-hmm. he that like at the beginning the film starts out with like his monologue and he feels like the days are kind of just boring right yeah because he doesn't have anything to do he's retired and uh he lives mo- he lives alone but with a maid yeah uh, who is they kind of have like a a relationship a, a married relationship but it's not really um it, it's, it's very weird. interesting it's just like they they act like an old married couple is what people would say yeah um but they're very like the the maid is very much not for that kind of terminology. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. She in fact she kind of fears marriage. She's like, yeah, it's forty or seventy four years or something. Common sense has served me to not get married. <laughs> uh, so yeah. it's fun. Uh, yeah. There's like. There's a lot of interesting things going on definitely in this film. Uh, the like the cinematography is there's definitely some scenes that are like really stand out to me. Um, like there's a scene where the young kids give him the flowers and they kind of just all fleet fades to black around him uh, yeah. and focuses on. Him. I thought that was like a really cool effect that they used there. Um, it's definitely the cinematography isn't like stunning like in uh persona yeah. but kind of feels unfair to make that comparison it's it's still like very good and very serviceable for what the film is yeah uh, oh, if you have yeah I, i'd agree i don't think there's a ton of shots that super stand out to me but it's all very nice looking i think it's very well presented mm-hmm. um the camera movement is often very well done it feels very precise um yep yeah i think yeah 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 um uh is there anything else i want to say about this film it's like it's like a really good film uh watch it it's wholesome too Uh, yeah it's like i wouldn't say it's feel good all the time but like the ending is very like oh yes um definitely if you also if you i want to say like maybe you have like anxieties about growing old or like relationships and stuff like that Mm. it's not a bad film to watch because it it definitely explores that i think in a in a positive way yeah yeah i'm just I'm thinking about Synecdoche, New York, and it's, like, <laughs> the opposite. It's, like, it's that, but it's, like, the most depressing shit ever. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, yeah. I definitely, yeah. Yeah. It's a good film. I do feel like maybe it takes a little bit for you to kind of get into it, I feel. Mm-hmm. Um, like, you have, like, him getting in the argument an argument with the maid at the beginning and stuff and that's like like it definitely serves a purpose in the story but it also while you're watching it you're kind of like oh why yeah <laughs> you know and same I mean? thing with like, like sorry no you go uh i was gonna say like the same thing with the first like dream sequence at the house kind of yeah like the whole thing is going on i'm like this is going on for like a while and i'm not sure what what's really the yeah. point yeah this is like a film that will definitely improve on rewatch mm-hmm. um but definitely i, I it, you, it takes a little bit to get into it especially dream sequences and everything are kind of like as you said it goes on too long or it yeah. feels like that and you're you're kind of just waiting around like okay what's the point of this sequence you know yeah there's like one point where i was like is this gonna be the, the rest of the entire movie yeah <laughs> um but Oh. Yeah. I, I yeah, uh, I, yeah. I I also love this film. Um, like, definitely really well done. Ingmar Bergman is, he's he's done it again. 
nine years previous to the last film we reviewed. He did it again. <laughs> he did it again, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we can... Uh, yeah, we can wrap up on this 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 bad boy right here. These wild yeah. strawberries. Yeah. Well, strawberries also fucking pop. Let me tell you, I love mm. I love strawberries personally. Big strawberries fan. are pretty cool. Yeah. They, they got the seeds on the outside, unlike most fruits. They're kind of wild like that. They need to calm the fuck down. <laughs> fucking stop it! You're scaring the children. There must be. That'd be okay. I've just, like, realized that there's definitely, like, a fruit taxonomy chart that I need to see now, because that, that thing must be kind of wild, you know? Mm. Just, just think. <laughs> just think. Taxonomy is, like, a weird science. I'm getting off topic anyways. Um, we knew scores. I personally, yeah. I really enjoyed this film. It's a really, it's a really nice watch. Um, there's a, like I said, there's a lot going on. The characters are, are very well done very well acted very well written Um, they're very fun to watch a lot of the time yeah and they definitely like they feel very much like they feel human and also there's some characters that feel very human there's some characters that definitely feel like set pieces and it's it kind of makes sense i want to say within Mm. the film um but yeah i'm at a i'm at like a nine an eight to a nine cool on this film um Yeah, I think this is a really great film. I think there's a lot you can get out of it. Um, it's interesting. It's pretty comfy, I'd say, most of yeah. the time. Um, so it's not like something... It's not like super depressing or anything. It's not yeah. going to ruin your day. <laughs> um, it's powerful moments, but it's not like... Oof. Yeah. Um, I think it's really well done. Uh, it looks really nice. Yeah, good film. I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Alright. Yeah. 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 Cool. Cool. Yeah. We could do this. It's also a short film, too. It's like 90 90 minutes. minutes. Yeah. So. Yeah, give it a watch. Yeah, do it. Yeah. 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 Um, well, that... That'll yeah, that'll do it. I guess for this episode That's... of Bangers, Bombs, and Banter. Um, yeah. Next time on the podcast, we are going to talk about the album "Orc" by uh, the OCs, and also we're gonna be watching the film or talking about and reviewing the film. Uh, Battleship Potemkin. Yeah, Battleship. Yeah. Sir Sergey Sergey Eisenstein. It's Russian, so... It's a 1920s silent film. Seems pretty yes. interesting. Yeah. Very influential film, from what I understand, at least. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks for watching. Come watch, listen more <laughs> again. You'll never, you're never listen to another podcast <laughs> like this if you live to be, be five thousand.